Welcome back. If you're just coming from having watched part one of this three-part series on reconciling your bank account to QuickBooks, if you've just hopped straight to this video, uh, then welcome. My name is Brian Bostrom. I'm one of the certified QuickBooks Pro Advisors at Squire & Company in Orem, Utah. Uh, you can reach us by email at quickbooks at squire.com. That's S-Q-U-I-R-E. Okay, so what I have here is a bank statement dated December 31st, 2013. And in this, uh, in this section of this video series, we are going to actually reconcile our QuickBooks file with this bank statement, with our, with our bank account. So this is a pretty typical bank statement. Uh, there is some summary information up top. We see that our present balance or our current balance as of 12-31-2013 is $114,000, $162.38. Uh, we have our previous month's balance, so the balance at November 30th was $188,000. Uh, and then uh, we have a couple other things uh, showing us our service charge. So our bank char charges us for their business uh, checking account, and we also earned a little bit of interest on the money that we had. And then we go down into the transaction details. So we've got our money coming in, our deposits, and other increases. Uh, here's the interest amount that was up in the summary section. And then we've got electronic withdrawals. So these are debit card purchases and electronic funds transfers and things that don't involve an actual paper check. It's money going out, but it's electronic. Uh, so those are quite uh, typically sectioned off in their own little section. And then down here at the bottom of our statement, we've got our, our regular checks with the check number and, and the date they cleared the bank here. So. That's what we're looking at. So to reconcile uh, our bank statement to QuickBooks, there are a couple ways to get into it. Uh, now I should mention that I'm in QuickBooks uh, Premier 2014. Uh, if you're in 2013 Pro Premier Enterprise, it's going to look pretty much identical to this. And if you're in a version 2012 or older, uh, still probably going to look pretty similar. And of course, online looks much different, but hopefully you can navigate your way through with these instructions just fine. So you can get into the reconcile window a couple different ways. Uh, one way is from the home screen here. There's this little reconcile button. You can go in that way. I typically go in uh, through the banking menu on top. I choose reconcile. So you're first going to come to this window and you need to choose the account that you're going to reconcile. So in this case it is this Bank of Anytown checking that I have a statement for that I'd like to reconcile. Uh, I'll need to input a statement date. Now, if you've reconciled this account before, QuickBooks is automatically going to pre-fill this field uh, with the next month's date from the last time you reconciled. So since I reconciled November 30th, it knows that, well, this next statement is most likely December 31st. So uh, check that date. Um, QuickBooks may have entered it correctly for you. And then we have a beginning balance. Now this beginning balance should be the ending balance on November 30th, 2013. And if it's not, then something's wrong. Uh, give us a call. There may be something we need to fix. Uh, and then we need to enter our ending balance. So the ending balance we saw on the bank statement, it's 114162.38. So we'll enter that. And then um, there are a couple other fields to enter information. Uh, service charge. Your bank may charge you a monthly fee for their business uh, checking account or, or something else. And then we also may earn a little interest. And there are a couple places to enter that here, but we'll come back to that in a minute. So after we've entered our ending, uh, ending balance, we can continue on with the process. So the window opens up, and uh, we have all of our deposits and credits on one side. This is money coming into the bank account. And then on the other side, we've got the money going out, checks and payments. Could be debit card purchases, electronic funds transfers, uh, or paper checks. All those money outs are going to show up over here. So these are the transactions that have never been matched to the bank account um, as of now. So they've never been reconciled. That's why they're showing up in this window. Any transactions that I reconciled back in November and matched to the bank account, they're not in this window. They've, they've been flagged as reconciled and they're never going to show up uh, in this reconcile window again. So 
What we're doing when we're reconciling is we are matching all of the transactions on our bank statement to a transaction inside of QuickBooks. So what I like to do is just start at the first transaction on my bank statement, which is typically a, a deposit, and I go then looking at, uh, in QuickBooks for it. So I'm looking for a deposit of $33,500, and I see that right here. So I'm going to check it off in my reconciliation window, and I'm also going to check it off uh, I like to print it off in paper, but check it off here on my bank statement. Uh, then I just work down the list. Uh, okay, interest earned of 15 cents. Now I don't have that sitting over here. Now the reason is I never, I haven't yet recorded it in QuickBooks because until I got the statement, I didn't know how much it was going to be. I haven't recorded it. So uh, we showed you that one place where you can put it, and you can get back into there. Let me show you again. Uh, by hitting this modify button. That'll take you back to the window where you entered your ending balance and we can then put in that interest earned of 15 cents. And it, I've done this before so it knows what account I want this interest earned to go to but if it's your first time doing it you're going to have to choose an account or create an account uh, for that interest income to go into. So I can hit continue and go back to where I was. So once I've entered that I can check that off and continue working my way down the list. So I only had uh, that one deposit and that interest earned as money coming into the account in that month and all the rest of my transactions were money going out. Electronic uh, withdrawals, debit card purchases, checks, things like that. So I'm going to go down my list here and check these things off as I find them. So a check for $227. Let's go back to QuickBooks. Um, let's look over here. There it is, $227. So I want to check this off. Now I can click anywhere on this line and, and it'll check off this transaction. I can click on the date, I can click on the payee, I can click on the amount, and it'll check it off for me. So that's what I want to do there. So I'll check it off here. Running down my list. Next, I've got $185. Let's go back. There it is. Check that off. Back to my statement. I found that one. Looking for $180 next. There we go. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to work my way down through all of these electronic withdrawals and then through all of my checks. Um, because this is going to take a few minutes to do, um, I'm not going to make you watch me do it. We'll come back to that in a second. We'll pick up when I'm done with that. Okay, so I've gone through my entire bank statement from top to bottom, and as I've found things in my QuickBooks Reconciliation window, I have checked them off in the QuickBooks Reconciliation window and checked them off on my bank statement. Now, there were a couple things that were on my bank statement that I didn't see in the QuickBooks Reconciliation window. One of them was this $25 service charge. Now, like the interest uh, income that we talked about earlier, the service charge is something that you typically don't record until you get the bank statement. And so there's a special place for that uh, in the QuickBooks reconciliation process. And to get back to that window where you enter the ending balance and the interest income and bank uh, service charges, hit this modify button here. And then we can put in our bank service charge here. Now, if you use online banking to pull your transactions in, you are going to see that $25 uh, dollar service charge come through in here for you to check. And so in that case, you wouldn't need to go back and enter it in here because it's already there in your reconciliation window to check off. Um, so the next thing that I didn't see is this $948.40, this check number 11324. Uh, it's possible that I just forgot to enter it altogether in QuickBooks. That happens sometimes. But before I go and enter a check for $948.40, I like to check to make sure that I didn't already enter it into QuickBooks but write it out of the wrong bank account or something like that. So I do a find for amount and I check. And yeah, it looks like I did write a check, 113.24. Uh, I'm not sure why. Oh, look, uh, here's why. It was out of the wrong bank account. So 
I changed the bank account to what it should be. I know this is the bank account that it cleared. I save and close. And when I close out of there, it now shows up in my reconciliation window here. So a couple things I want to point out before I check that and finish this process. There are certain transactions here that aren't checked, and that means that I didn't see them on my bank statement. There's a check here to Smith & Company stores for, or sorry, that's a, uh, we know what that is. There's a check to Western Telephone Company for $100 written back uh, a month ago. It hasn't cleared the bank as of the end of the month. That's okay. It's pretty common for a company to take a check, uh, for you to write a company a check, and they don't cash it for uh, several weeks or a month. Now, if this was something back in 2012, I'd be concerned that I need to call a Western Telephone Company and ask if they're ever going to cash that check or issue them a new one, or maybe look to see if this was a duplicate check and I'd actually recorded two of these check numbers and, and one of them had cleared in a previous month and had been reconciled. And in that case, we've got an expense double recorded here and I would need to do an adjustment to get rid of this transaction. But um, it's okay to have some outstanding checks. Now this looks funny to me, this deposit sitting here for $100,500. Uh, Deposits don't really hang out the way the checks do because you don't take money to your bank and they just sit on it before they uh, deposit into your account and, and uh, it shows up on the statement. This deposit made back in uh, no, on November 1st of 2013 should have been on that November bank statement and um, already been reconciled. So this would be something that you would want to look into um, either alone if you feel comfortable with that or with your accountant. It's not going to affect our reconciliation because we don't have it checked. Um, but it could potentially mean that in your, on your financial statements you've got $100,000 too much income uh, sitting there. So that's something you want to look into. So a key concept in reconciling is that we want this difference down here to be zero. Right now it's not. Now what this number is, um, is you've got this ending balance. This is what you told QuickBooks according to your bank statement that your ending balance needs to be. But this clear balance is what QuickBooks thinks that it should be based on all these things you checked. So QuickBooks is saying, hey, you've told me that the ending balance of the bank account is 114, 162, 38. But based on the beginning balance of the account and the transactions that you've marked off here, I see that the bank account balance should be 115, 110, 78. So there's a problem. There's this difference, this discrepancy of 948.40. There's something that you have checked um, here in your reconciliation window uh, that wasn't on the bank statement or the other way around. Now the reason why our difference is 948.40 is because I have not yet checked this transaction here that we just changed from the, uh, from the other bank account. And once I do that, then our difference is zero. Um, now say that I hadn't done that yet and I I never went and found this 948.40 and so I have this difference here and I hit reconcile now before the difference is zero. QuickBooks is going to give me this option to enter an adjustment. Uh, now this is no magic fix. What this is going to do is create an account called reconciliation discrepancy. It's kind of a miscellaneous uh, expense account. And it's a red flag to an auditor. It says, hey, this money in this account, don't know where it went, don't know where it came from. Uh, so that's something that you don't really ever want to use. I'd never advise trying to reconcile when this balance isn't zero and making this sort of adjustment. Uh, it was really made to correct a couple pennies. Maybe you miskeyed a couple pennies and you don't want to go digging through all these amounts and trying to find two cents. And so you make this little adjustment and it fixes it. But anything more than that, I've never advised doing this. So hopefully you never see that message. What we want is to see this difference get to zero, uh, which happens when I check off this transaction, and then I can hit reconcile now. And QuickBooks is going to give me the option to print a report. So what happens when you hit reconcile now is all those transactions that you had checked get flagged as having been reconciled or having been matched to the bank account. So let's look at this report real quick just for fun. Uh, this report will show you all of the transactions that you match to your bank statement and then it also shows you anything that you've recorded in QuickBooks but hasn't yet cleared the bank. So these are some of those items we were looking at. Checks that you've 
sent to a vendor, but they just haven't cashed yet. So this is something you can just keep for your records. So that is how you reconcile a bank account in QuickBooks. I hope that this video has been helpful. For tips and tricks and troubleshooting, uh, please watch the next video. Thanks for watching.